Ready? Roll, Damn, sir. hold, or close. This is expiration week. We felt it's important to cover this topic. Let's do it. So, because so many people have questions with respect to, do you roll a position? Mm-hmm. Do you hold a position? Do you close a position? So, why do we roll trades? As expiration approaches, we'll roll to extend duration when our assumption of the underlying has not changed from when the trade was initially placed. The increased duration allows us to increase our probability of success and reduce our risk by managing winners. This is due to marketplace cyclicality. Hey, you know what? Over the course of a month, you've there's a couple stocks like last week, for example, that I had crappy positions in on the down move. They all turned into good positions, mm-hmm. but I didn't take them off. So now they're crappy again. Correct. Something like Yahoo. Yahoo got down around $32. We had some short uh, trades going right there. We needed just under 32 bucks. Now it's higher. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of them. Facebook got down to under 46. Now it was back to 48 or 49. Mm-hmm. So there are different situations where, you know what? I got I, bailed out on Apple last time. Uh, and an some of them we took off. Like got mm-hmm. bailed out of Netflix, took it off. Got bailed out of Apple, took it off. I mean, there are times when we take some off. There are other times when we don't. Right. I guess the reason we roll is to keep trades that we want to have on in play and wait again for that duration aspect to kick in. Yes. That's all it is. Yes. So um, that's the reason for rolling. Do we roll trades that we don't care about anymore? Pretty rare. Mm-hmm. We'd much prefer to roll trades that are kind of that, we, that matter to us. Let's go next slide. What are the ways to determine whether to roll, close, or hold? Well, first of all, and most important, has your assumption changed? Like a lot of times, um, a lot of times, it's not so much my market assumption that'll change so much, but there are times when I just don't want to deal with a certain stock anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm done with that stock. And there are other times when I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll keep this position on one more cycle. Sure. Ha- is your trade on the dance floor? Is your trade, like, are you close? If you're close, you want to roll just because you're close. And because the statistical chance, if you're- Because by rolling, you're giving yourself more time to be right. If you're long or short a stock at $50, XYZ is trading for $50, and 51 or 49 are your perfect numbers that you actually make some money on, and you're trading at 50, and you want to say, I'm going to hold this stock for the next, I'm going to wait for the next 30 days until it trades 49 or 51, there's almost a 100% chance that it's going to do that. Mm -hmm. So you take that shot. And you roll that position. That's what we call it by on the dance floor. How much ex- how much extrinsic value is left? Well, this morning I started going through some of my positions, and there was no extrinsic premium left in some of my in some of the short calls I have on. So I have to roll those positions. Correct. There's basically just like stock, and that's not the reason that you put on that that's position. That's right. So today I have to roll some positions to November so I can pick up some additional premium because the only reason you roll is to to give yourself time, but also to collect premium in the process. Correct. How much would you – I'm sorry. Would you would you make the new roll trade if you had no position on? And this is something that I'm very mixed on. Um, there's a lot of times when I look at a position – like I, I'll give you an example right now um, of positions I have on. Like Your answer is going to be no. Well, I don't know. Like for example, right now I have a position on in, in AIG. I've had it on since earnings of last cycle. Um, I'm short stock and I've been the cycle before, but okay. Right. Well, whatever. Two cycles. Mm-hmm. So I've been selling premium in there two cycles. Would I make the new the same trade in AIG right now? Probably not. Correct. Okay, but I'm short stock and I'm short the October forty nine puts. I'm gonna roll the October forty nine puts to the November forty nine puts this morning. Wherever that's stock, wherever that's open on November for a second. So November 49 puts are trading for 104, and the OC puts are trading for 21 cents. I'll probably roll that trade for about 82 or 83 cents. I'm sorry, maybe I can get a little more. I was stocks, say, down. stocks down a little bit. Yeah, so maybe I can roll that trade for 87 or 88 cents this morning. I'm going to roll that trade, pick up another 88 cents on on however many contracts I have. Is that a trade that I would? Open today, short stock and short puts in AIG. Ah, I probably don't care about it. Right. I really don't care about AIG enough to to, to make that trade, but I have it on already, and I'm going to try to get another 83 cents out of that trade this month. I need to – Or a I, little bit more. If the stock cooperates and goes below correct. 49, then you'll be out of the trade. Correct. So I need to make some more – I, I want to make some money more – some more money back on that trade. I've been slowly nibbling away at the loss in there. Mm-hmm. So would I make the new trade if I didn't have the position on? Probably not, but I'm still going to make that roll because I'm quote on the dance floor and my assumption on AAG hasn't changed. I think it's still going down. How much extrinsic premiums left? Only 22 cents. That's why I'm rolling into November. Very good. Let's go to the next slide. Any other factors to consider? Well, time remaining relative to profits made and the ratio of return on capital. We talk about that all the time. But the simple part there is, you know, 
I would leave this trade on for a couple of more days if I had more premium. I'm looking for a position I have on right now where there's um, – I'll give you one. Like in BlackBerry, for example, which is BBRY, I have a position on where I'm short the eight calls, I'm short the nine calls, and I'm short the 11 puts. That is uh, a, a perfect example of I'm not going to roll the trade. Right. I'm I'm going to hold the trade this week for as long as I can and hope the stock bounces up just a little bit. And then there's not really much more I can make in there. And then I'm going to close the trade. You want the stock to close somewhere between eight and 11, you'd be taken out, right? Yeah, I mean, the trade's over at the end of this week, mm -hmm. but I'm not rolling it. And I'm just holding it to squeeze out the last few pennies in there. And when it's over, it's over. I'm done with BlackBerry. Correct. So that's a, sad, an era. An it's era the end of by. an era. They but, win. But that's that's an example of a, of a trade that um, I am prepared to close. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the um, let's go next one. Do we roll, roll, close, or hold if the trade is at the money? Well, if your trade is at the money, you may look to roll out of the trade in time to gain duration. Um, and again, when you gain duration, you reduce your directional risk in the trade and you add probability of profit. That's all it is. Reduce directional risk, add probability of profit because ultimately you're taking extending your durational risk as well. You're extending your tail risk. Mm -hmm. So anytime you extend your tail risk, you essentially increase your probability of profit and you just, you know, you, you give yourself more time to be right. But in the process of doing that, you extend your outside tail risk and there's nothing you can do about that. That's the trade off. Questions to ask are, do you keep the same strikes, different strikes or decrease or increase risk? And I'm looking at kind of an example of a trade I have on where I'm short. Um, let me find a perfect um one of the underlyings I have a position on right now is, for example, EWZ, which is – EWZ is the Brazilian um, ETF. ETF. And I'm short some in-the-money calls, the 44 line, and I'm short some out-of-the-money puts, the 47 line. This is a perfect example of a trade that I have to roll this morning. Again, I'm short the 44 calls and the 47 and a half puts. So you basically short stock and short the 47 Yes, puts. this is an underlying that I want to keep my short position in. Okay, because I, I, my assumption hasn't changed, but my 47 and a half puts in in October have no premium left. So I'm going to have to do two things here. I'm going to have to change the strike, different strikes, and decrease the position risk. So I'm going to keep the 44 calls because we don't touch those, and I'm going to roll up to something like the 48, 49, or 50 calls. I, I'm sorry. Puts. Stocks is 49 and a half. I'm going to roll up to like the 50 puts. I'm going to have an inverted strangle on. So I'm rolling the position. I'm keeping the dream alive, but I'm also adjusting strikes. Sure. Would you would you roll the, the calls also? Take them out of October? Of course. And, okay. Of course. Of, so you said I'm not going to do anything to the calls. No, no, no. I'm not going to change the strike on the calls. Got but it. I'm going to roll both to November. Now, here, just go back to the to page for a second. Just trade to uh, Yeah, trade page. Mm -hmm. Let's just think about what that does. Right now, I have no premium on the short – uh, 44 calls, and I have very little premium on the 47 and a half puts. But it, that's in October. Yes, but if you go to November right now, let's go open up November. So if I go to November and I roll the 44 put, the 44 calls, I'm going to pick up 20 cents. But if I roll the 50s, um, I'm going to pick up the equivalent of about a buck 30. So net net, I'm going to pick up a buck 50 in premium. Now, how's that? What's that going to mean, mean for next month? Well, I don't know. It's going to it's going to change my basis by about a buck 50. Um, That's exactly what it means. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and, it's, and not, given, you know, it's not I don't know. Well, given the number of spreads I have on ultimately in the end, that dollar 50, if I'm able to collect it, is going to take me from slightly negative to slightly positive Correct. in the year. OK, do we roll close or hold debit spreads when in the money or out of the money? For debit spread in the money, we look to close the trade. I mean, listen, if we're up money, we're going to close the trade, even though it's a high probability trade. If the spread's out of the money and there's little left to lose, we may keep it as a lottery ticket or just play reversion to the mean. We rarely will roll those trades, debit spreads. An example of that for me is I have a position on an FXE where I have the October um, 132, 134 put spread. The stock is currently trading at just closed just over 134. Now, that's an example of an at-the-money put spread, and in this case, it's slightly – now, this morning with the rally in there, it went slightly out of the money. I'm just going to um, – for me, I'm going to do nothing. You're going to eat it. Right. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to hope I'm – I'm going to treat it as a lot of tickets, and I'm not going to roll that position. If I was going to roll it, I would change the strikes. Correct. You don't expect anything from it. Okay. I just want to give you real examples of positions I have on that, that um, you know, where all these are consideration. Let's go to the next slide. 
Do we roll a trade if it's at the money? Well, if your trade is at the money, you may look to roll the trade out in time to gain duration for the trade increasing probability of profit. Questions to ask are, do you keep the same strikes, different strikes, or increase or decrease? decrease risk. We're, we're kind of saying the same thing on every single slide. And I, I know it sounds repetitive, but this is the kind of week where we need to just have this discussion because you have to get to where you don't overthink this stuff. Like I'm not going to spend becomes just mechanical. Yeah. I'm not going to spend more than 12 seconds on like FX. each one of these decisions. That's right. <laughs> because that's where we start to drive ourselves crazy. You know, I'm not going to worry about AIG. I'm not going to worry about FXC. And if, let me tell you, if you had limited capital, I may think of things differently too. Correct. Just remember where we were a couple days ago. and That's just, a good point because you don't talk about that a lot of times. You know, If you have limited capital, you are going to think about things slightly different. Well, I'm not going to throw good money after bad as much as I may if I think the position is small enough mm -hmm. and I can buy more time. Right. Yeah, good it's, point. You know, on, on a professional level, I will tell you something. On a professional level, m most pros are reluctant to roll positions. Most pros, pros – will take their take their lumps and move on because sure. they find a clean slate to be more effective. I find as a retail customer, it's not nearly as cost effective to do that. Mm -hmm. So if there's an opportunity to salvage the trade and because it just costs a lot of money to put trades on it to take trades off, as a professional, I would just blow everything out. As a retail customer, I'm more likely to hold the trade. Correct. Okay. Let's go last slide. So again, do we roll close, rolled, roll, hold, or close a trade if it is at the money? And same thing as we just, same thing that we just talked about just a second ago. I mean, exact same outline. I kind of think mm -hmm. it's the same slide. It is. Um, okay. Um, and I can't harp on. I can't really get into this. I can't say it enough times. You know, um, you look at your overall portfolio. One of the things I did this morning, this is kind of a little sicko move. It's about 4.30 this morning, and I finally caught up with my emails, and I went through every single underlying I had. And as I'm going through each underlying, I was kind of like, wow, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time in my life to kind of stay on top of this. I think one of the things that, that's hurt us in 2013, Tony, is that we haven't spent enough time on this very simple topic of roll, hold, or close. We take a lot of stuff for granted because we're doing the show, and we probably aren't as mechanical as we need to be about rolling um, – about rolling, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. I think there are certain situations where we've let the premium lapse a little bit and we need to be more diligent. One of the notes I made to myself for 2014 is be more mechanical. Be more mechanical. I understand. Because we kept saying it to us ourselves this year, but I don't think we did a great, a good enough job being aggressively rolling. Okay. We've also had a one way market too. Which, That's the which other is problem. Okay. That's the other problem. I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight when you have a one way market, hey, we should have been more aggressive. If you have a market that's two-sided, you're like, you should have waited. If you have a more cyclical market, then that's right. you're waiting. That's right. Okay, and that's what we play. Okay.